Welcome to Quick Start for Inventory on the online version 2017. First up, we're in our home screen and we want to go to the top right to the gear. In this, we're going to move over to the list of products and services. The product service comes through and it will show you any low stock or out of stock if you've set for a reorder point on any of your items. Most of this list should be coming in from your Excel upload or if you're converting to the online edition from the desktop. A lot of times you're just starting your business and you want to add your items on the fly here. So we want to go up to the top right and it does give you an option to import those items through an Excel spreadsheet. I would say if you had more than five, I would probably do that. If not, go ahead and hit new. The first thing of this screen you want to pay attention to is selecting the proper product or service you're selling. So you have different types. You have inventory, non-inventory, service, and bundling. Inventory is a product or service you want to sell that you will keep track of the quantity for. That means you could do a physical inventory sheet every month, count your inventory, make any adjustments. And then you also have the non-inventory, which is an inventory part you're not going to keep a physical count on. Then you have your service, which is your uh, in this case, this is a landscape company, so they have design, or you can have installation. Um, and then you also have the bundle, where, in, again, with a landscape company, they probably bundle. If they're selling a fountain, they would have a design for that fountain and installation. And you can bundle that as one line item, almost one job there, and it will have a total for that one line item of all your products. First thing we want to go over the most common ones that you set up are inventory and service items. So let's set those up. The inventory item in this case I want to buy is a dolphin fountain. So I'm just going to put the description in here. And you'll notice the next line is a SKU line. That's if you were using SKUs, then that would upload through the SKU and you would use your wand or any device to relieve your inventory, such as at a cash register system. Um, and there are many add-on products that you can use um, for your type of business. Next up is the category. The landscape company has different categories they want to see their inventory sorted in. And in this case, they have design and fountains and landscape. Well, I'm creating a line item for a fountain, so my category is fountain. The quantity on hand is zero at this point, and the as of date is, since it's the beginning of a new calendar year, I'm going to put in 1117. And I don't have a reorder point. Uh, this is custom order, so zero. Now let's get to the meat of the matter here. This is how it moves through your account. When you create an inventory item, it is an inventory asset. It is not sold yet, so it sits on your balance sheet as an asset for your company. And you also have the option here to put in the sales information that goes on the invoice form so you don't have to type, type it again. Let me get my dolphin fountain in here. And you can put the sale price in, which is $500, and come over. And this is the income account. This is what would show on your profit and loss. If you have different types of income, you might have several income accounts. Next up, is it taxable? In this case it is, we'll select the taxable. That means when it comes on the invoice, it already is checked to be taxed. Purchasing information is if you are actually purchasing from a vendor that uses a specific name. If not, you can use the same name that you did for your sales. The cost of this item I do know is $250, so I will put that amount in. The expense account is cost of goods. 
Um, you may have different cost of goods account, but the whole idea is that everything sits up in your inventory asset and then once you sell it, it creates the income and relieves the expense. Now we'll go on and create one more item. Take the drop down and say save and new. You want to change the type. In this case, we're going to add a service item. And we're going to call this installation. Again, this would not have a SKU, so I don't need to actually fill that out. And I don't really have a category set up, so I'm going to leave as is. In the sales information, I want to go ahead and put installation. Oops. And the sale price on this installation is $100. And it is not taxable. And I don't purchase this product from anyone and I will hit save and close. Now my list should show the new dolphin fountain and as I scroll down here is my installation. Up at the top here you can see the dolphin fountain is under fountains. You have a drop down to the right. If you find that you've uh, sold an item and you don't use that item anymore, you can make it inactive. You can also run reports through this item, which we'll do in a moment. The other good drop down option here is to adjust the quantity. If you've gone in and say you've um, inventoried a bunch of items and you find you're short, you can adjust the quantity right through here so that your physical inventory sheet is accurate. Now we want to go purchase a product, so I'm going to go over to my vendors and you can select the vendor, this is by Alpha here, or you can scroll down. I am going to purchase it from Norton Lumber. So I open up Norton Lumber, here's all their activity, and I want to do a new transaction which I'm going to create a bill. As the bill comes up, it populates the mailing address. If you would set any terms, I'm going to select net 30 and you want to make sure to put the bill date in and uh, the bill number. And there are two options here. You have account details and item details. The account details are if we're paying for some type of expense in this. So I could have uh, freight expenses, equipment rentals. You'll notice I can take the drop down and find the different options for expenses. So I'm going to take a look through here and I'm going to put an office expense in. I notice they don't have a freight created but I'm going to add this in the description. And you could add one on the fly there if you need to for freight. I'm going to put the amount in is $50 and is it billable to the customer? And yes it is. Um, in this case I want to make sure to bill back for the freight. Is it taxable? No, I didn't get taxed on it. And I believe the customer that we are selling this custom um, dolphin fountain for is Dylan. Now down at the bottom here, a lot of times it will populate the last items you bought from this vendor. If that is the case, you want to come to the right and hit the delete on the little trash can there. And we're going to go over to the product and service and start typing dolphin in. A lot of times you want to just select it here with your mouse. If you have to add any descriptions in, uh, more so than the one that's populated, you can do so here. You can come over to the quantity and it will tell you if you have any on hand and of course your reorder point. In this case we're purchasing one and it's going to be for $250. And is that billable to the customer? I've already set the cost in there. I don't need that to populate and it is taxable. And I'm just going to select Dylan as my customer. This will create a report just based on this customer and based on this line item of the costs. 
and the income. Also, there's a, a um, attachment option here along with a memo that you can include in this bill. We want to save and close. And now we've created the bill and brought the inventory in. Next step is I want to sell this inventory. So I'm going to move to the left to my customers. And it will open up your customer screen with the, your navigator bar. And then these are all alpha in here. If I go to Dylan, you'll see to the right, I have an option to create an invoice. The invoice populates with any information you have for the customer and the terms. Select the invoice date, and then I'll come down here to the product that I'm selling him. And here's my Dolphin Fountain populates the description, puts in the sale amount that I set for it in the item. To the right here is options to add any billable expenses. So I want to add the freight. I can just add it quickly to my invoice and populate it. Notice it's not taxable. I select the tax in this case is California at 8% is only taxed on that taxable check right there. You can also give a discount percent on the invoice as well. To the left is your attachment, any memos, and you will hit save and close. You do have the option here to save and send this and you can hook up uh, for the ATM or uh, credit card withdrawals. Once you've saved that invoice, let's go back over to the products and services, which is gear, list, product, and services. And I can go over to the Dolphin Fountain and actually run a quick report on it. I can run an inventory report and in this, it will show me exactly how it moved through my accounts. So this is what I always call the hidden accountant in here, doing all the work, making sure that it goes to its proper place. We had everything set in inventory as an asset. So you'll see the starting was the 250 rate that we set with no quantity. We created a bill and we relieved it with an invoice to Dylan. The balance is now zero. There's nothing in my inventory on the Dolphin Fountain. But everything moved out of the inventory asset. It hit the sales of product income, so 500 of it went to my income account and the 250 went to my cost of goods, which will reflect on my profit and loss. There are a lot of different reports in here to run. I have a few of my favorites. So let's go on over to reports on the left. Always hit all reports. This way it will give you the best direction to get to the information that you wanna see. And I wanna review sales. My favorite report in here is sales by product service summary. This is a snapshot in time of the services or products we have sold. So it goes over the quantity, the date, um, the average price, the cost of goods, and then the gross margins. This really helps for any sales commissions that you have to do to get the true cost of what the product uh, that he sold was. The other report, go to reports and all reports, is a business overview of my profit and loss. In this report, you want to select the month you're looking at, run report. It will bring up your income, which is 550. I can see who that came from and I can drill down on any of these transactions. 
This has been a quick start class on how to create inventory items, bring them in through a bill, and sell them to your customers on an invoice. Thank you again, and I look forward to my next class, which should be payroll. If you have any questions, please call or email.